Hello and welcome to our Saturday stream, uh, Fantasy Grounds Map and Image Creation. I'm Josh. Uh, thanks for joining me this afternoon. Um, sorry that I missed out last week. I actually lost power, so uh, uh, hopefully everything goes well today. Uh, I think that it should. I am feeling a little bit under the weather, but I think that we'll be okay. Uh, so I might have a little bit shorter of a stream today, but uh, we're going to press onward and, and see what we can do here. So I hope everyone's having a great week. Uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff to kind of go over today. I uh, usually like to start off the stream by talking about all of the image-related news and, and that uh, what's going on inside of Fantasy Grounds. Uh, so upcoming uh, next month's releases are going to be uh, Fantasy Grounds Siege Art Packs. I have two of them coming out. Uh, one is primarily dedicated to uh, medieval um, offensive so like large uh, catapults and trebuchets and ballistas and all kinds of things like that, as well as lots of um, overlays and textures to turn any map into uh, kind of like a war zone. Right? So there's going to be like um, uh, things that you can just kind of plop onto a map and it's going to look like uh, you're going to have these large gouges out of the earth and, and things along those nature. And then the other uh, Siege art pack is about um, encampments and defensive measures. So I made a whole bunch of really cool uh, fortifications, uh, stone walls, barricades, uh, lots of tents and uh, everything from training dummies to war drums. So that should be super fun. Uh, and that should add uh, a lot of uh, really cool kind of elements uh, to the art packages that have already been released. I think that we've released uh, 33 products so far, including all of the themes, uh, and that's just in the last year alone. So uh, if you get the art subscription, it's a wonderful deal. $5 a month, and you get access to all of those things, uh, which should be super, super fun. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we are, uh, as you guys probably are aware, if you watch this stream, you probably do make a lot of maps and do those things. Um, but uh, our control Z has been removed for a small amount of time here while the system gets reworked. Uh, and uh, in the last meeting, Carl has given us an update that that's uh, well underway and should be coming back to us shortly and in a much better kind of position. So that should be super exciting there. I can't wait to get my hands and test that out. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I know that there is a, a couple of um, other techniques that I have developed this last a week or so working inside of Fantasy Grounds, and I'm going to show some of those off today. Uh, and uh, one of the things that uh, we've kind of struggled in in making maps is uh, jumping between images. And that is where we can really use the hot uh, bar here at the bottom. So we have 1 through 12 here at the bottom, uh, and uh, we can change this to have a control as well. So let me just show you here. If we hit control, uh, you're going to see that it's going to change to C1. If I hit Alt and if I hit Shift, now we can do any combination of these as well. So we have very many uh, different uh, iterations of this at the bottom here. We can actually use this to store images that we're going to be using a lot in our image creation, which is a really great technique. Um, and allows us to jump back and forth. So for example, let me just pull up some assets here. Uh, I'm just going to type in the word shadow here, and we'll grab one of these like shadow brushes that I oftentimes use, maybe one of these soft rounds ones. And I can drag this and drop this right down into uh, my hot bar here. And so when I want to use this, I can just grab this and drop it right into the image a section of my creation system here. So if we were to, let's see here. Well, let's, let's grab our waterfall cave here uh, that we made a long time ago. And uh, this is one of the earlier art packs. And uh, we can just grab this and drag it up and use this right into our system here. So if I jump over into the painting area, let's create a new uh, painting. Uh, I can easily uh, transition these back and forth. So all of our images that we use uh, often, uh, we can drop into our hot, our hot bar. Uh, one of the real great advantages of doing this is that we don't have to constantly kind of cycle through our assets. And so uh, as you can see, everything is going to work uh, just exactly the way that we anticipate it. And we can switch back over and maybe... Uh, drop down our opacity there to make some nice little shadows and whatnot. So this is a super cool uh, thing, and I can't believe that I hadn't thought of it earlier, but I oftentimes jump back and forth between images, and this is going to alleviate and really speed up the process here. 
So I'm just going to delete that and we'll drop this down here. Uh, so I don't have any actual uh, planned um, uh, map or image creation for today. Uh, we're just going to go through a couple of different things. I'm going to uh, briefly show off some of the siege elements. Um, but I have um, uh, just a, a very small number of them uh, loaded up in here. And I can kind of show you what, what those are. And then I would love to get some suggestions from you guys. And we will build a really great map today. I think that that would be super fun. Um, so let's see here. We can jump into this is going to be the Siege Map Pack 1 and 2. And you can see I just have the decorations loaded in this uh, particular uh, element right now. And um, if I jump over here, you can see that we have a whole different array of here's ballistas and uh, elements like these um, these covered battering rams and in different many different iterations, uh, lots of different carts, uh, catapults. Uh, we have uh, larger kind of trebuchets, trebuchets. Sometimes I stumble. And we also have like lots of different kind of ladder elements. And I also believe that I did some uh, siege towers and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So here's just like a quick little uh, sample of some of these elements here. And if we come all the way back up, we can go into uh, the siege two map pack. And here we have a whole bunch of new brushes, as you can see here. We have some really cool, and uh, I, you know what? I think I'm actually going to demonstrate a couple of these brushes because I'm super excited about them. Um, one of the great things that uh, I have often tried to emulate is a lot of different perspective in some of the art elements. Uh, that can be very difficult, especially because we're working primarily from a top-down perspective. Uh, trying to find a really decent marriage between a perspective-based image and that top-down kind of, um, well, functionality, uh, we kind of have to um, really fudge a lot of stuff in there. But uh, I've actually been developing a system by which that we can kind of uh, enter into that. So let me just, uh, let's just create a new image here. I'm just going to right-click and create image. And this is going to create us a nice little blank workspace in here. And I'm just going to create a new painting layer, and that's going to get everything started here. Uh, let's just switch this over to 100 by 100. Uh, and then I'm just going to drop down the opacity of this really quickly. Uh, so while I'm doing that, anybody who wants to throw in an idea for a map that we're going to be creating today, uh, I would love to see that. Well, I also did like trench brushes, and I have a bunch of other brushes as well that aren't loaded up here. Uh, but let's jump over into our painting area here, and I'll just drop this in. Uh, and you can see that this has uh, quite a lot of detail in it and does have a little bit of uh, actual perspective here. Uh, so now what I can do is, with my line tool selected, I can just begin to paint this out. And this is going to create a really cool kind of environmental effect uh, where we get a little bit of this uh, shadowed kind of content from the front edge of this brush. So this should be super cool. Uh, in addition to this, I have uh, several other iterations of this. Uh, so we can see here, here is another one along the same kind of lines. So working out all of this um, uh, perspective-based, uh, but still in a very functional kind of top-down, uh, it took me quite some time, uh, but I'm super pleased with the results. And I have some much larger ones as well. So we have some really full-on... Uh, kind of um, these castle walls, as you can see here. And these are going to be great for creating a lot of these uh, siege kind of environments. And uh, in addition to that, uh, some of these decorations, we have like all kinds of tents and uh, lots of different elements that you might see finding around inside of these areas here. So super cool stuff uh, that's coming out. And this is all going to be released in this next month. Uh, usually they come out in the first um, Tuesday of the month. Uh, but sometimes they get pushed back a little bit depending on the number of other uh, elements that are going to be released. Uh, so there is a queue, um, a, and it is quite long. There's there's quite a long queue of um, of new products coming out all the time. Uh, so James is always putting together uh, a tremendous amount of um, uh, work in doing that. So that's always great too. Uh, so actually what I'm going to do is let's uh, just grab our eraser and I'm going to make my eraser a little bit bigger and we can just erase all this stuff right out of here. And we can begin to create our actual uh, product here. 
So let's see. Uh, oh, a mountain pass, castle walls on the side, and the path going uh, between. Sure, that sounds like super fun. Uh, I'm not going to be using any of the elements from the newer uh, art packs coming out uh, because the ones that I have right here in, in this uh, installment are uh, still in their uh, developmental stage. The actual finished products are already uploaded to the SVN, but uh, these ones uh, we won't be using today. Uh, but we can certainly do that with many of the other art products that we have already released. Uh, so we can jump right into that. So if we're going to do like a mountainous kind of area, you know, we're going to be working with a lot of shadows to help uh, sell our perspective to make sure that we have uh, really good indicators of the height of certain things, which is always super fun. And I always thoroughly enjoy doing that. I think that we'll start off in doing something along those lines uh, with, uh, oh, oh yes, and you know, uh, one of the things that I would like to talk about before we really get started here is in the decals. Uh, many of these decals that came out uh, this month uh, can be used in lots of different ways. We've kind of talked about this before, but there's a lots of different texture ones in here. Uh, and these work exceptionally well uh, when we're trying to add them into um, a lot of different environmental kind of effects here. Uh, so that's always super fun to do in addition to that. Just thought I'd mention that as I saw the decal pack uh, sitting right there. But we're going to jump into the 2019 art pack, and I'll grab a couple of these tiles. Uh, I like to use these tiles as a really good base measure. And uh, I'm just going to drag and drop some of these out here. I'm going to use some of these darker ones. And these always come out at uh, 10 by 10. Uh, so we can really quickly begin to build up this area here. And I think what I'm actually going to do is just use this one. And let's, I'm going to move this. Uh, well, we can, we can duplicate this, uh, but let's make a new folder. And we'll call it ground. And then I'm going to drop this right inside of here. Now when I duplicate this, it'll stay right inside of the folder here. And I'm just going to make four of them and drag them right out. And we can quickly build out a pretty large little area here. And these are all seamless, so these can all just fit together uh, exactly. So we don't have to worry about that too much either. We can close this up so we don't have to worry about it too much. And now we can start to add in all of the other elements that we want to do. So we're actually going to be uh, building a mountain pass with some castle balls on the side. And uh, we'll begin this, right? We'll, we'll, we're going to start this. And I'm actually going to uh, kind of sketch out uh, the way that we're going to uh, want to create the entire thing, right? Uh, it's always good if you're going to be doing something that you have this preconceived kind of idea to kind of sketch out uh, exactly what you want to do. And you can do that right inside of Fantasy Grounds as well. Uh, one of the things that uh, doesn't get used enough, and here I'm just going to make this uh, red so that we can actually see this in a little bit larger, uh, are these uh, the default kind of painting uh, tools that we have here. Now holding down uh, my mouse button, I'm able to uh, just draw uh, as I wish, as you can see here, and it works exceptionally well and we can do all kinds of things. Normally I would uh, control Z that, but uh, we'll just erase it right now. Um, so what I'm basically I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of plan out a little bit ahead of time uh, all of my different elements here, right? So we're gonna do a mountain pass. Uh, so we're gonna do the mountain coming from the top over here. Uh, we won't see the actual peak of the mountain. Uh, we're just gonna see the side of the mountain and we're gonna do the pass so that it kind of comes around and then maybe winds down something like this, right? And I think that that will work uh, quite well here. And so what we'll actually do here, and what I think will, will be kind of cool, uh, we'll actually, let's move this over a little bit. And so I'm just going to move this over, and I can actually control this. I can um, maneuver this around and kind of get this exactly where I want it, even after the fact. And this is one of the really huge advantages of doing this inside of Fantasy Grounds. And so if we do our mountain pass here, we can do a nice little um, uh, incline on this side, and maybe we'll do um, the castle wall along the edge here. And then we're going to do like a cliff and a drop off. So this is going to fall down, and maybe we'll do some water at the bottom of the cliff. And that sounds pretty exciting. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, this is all I really need. I'm going to be uh, maybe building a wall. I want there to be a little bit of separation. We'll do the wall coming off this way. Uh, but we won't do any other uh, structures inside of here. Maybe this is just like the bottom fortification of a fort that's going to be up on the top here. But this is going to give us plenty of, to work on today, and this will be uh, super fun. 
And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to move back over into my Layers tab. And in here, I'm just going to drop down my Opacity. So it's not going to really interfere, but it's going to maintain. I'm going to be able to see, oh yeah, that's where I want to do my pass. And this is where I'm going to do my wall. And we're going to do it from there. And I'm actually going to build up the wall from some stone and some other elements. And um, we have a whole bunch of different walls in here. And we can just uh, find them very easily uh, by, click, by uh, searching in our assets area here. Just type in wall. And you'll see that I'm going to get a whole bunch of different walls uh, available to me. And I'm going to kind of, kind of go through and see if there's anything that stands out to me that I might want to use. And these are the ones that are coming out, the new ones. And we have tons and tons of walls. So let me just drop this down so we can see here. And we could do, oh yeah, let's do um, this, this actual stone wall here. We could use this. I think it will work really well. Uh, we could also use this one as a base. Uh, we have all kinds of these like broken stones here. We wanted to make it like an ancient uh, castle. And so whatever wall I'm actually going to choose here, I'm going to grab it and then I'm going to drop it down into um, my hot key, my hot bar keys down here at the bottom. And then uh, we'll be able to uh, build up from there. As you can see, there's quite a lot of walls. So I think I'm going to actually go with uh, a couple of these ones. So as we come back here, um, let's grab a couple of these. I'll grab this and drop them down here. And then uh, maybe this one as well. And I think uh, we'll actually use this one too. So we'll use all three of these walls and then maybe even one of these uh, more broken up parts as well. We could use this as a base. I think. I think I'm going to stick with uh, a lot of these and using them as brushes. So maybe something like this, we could widen it out. Yeah, let's use this one. So we have a couple of these. These are just uh, regular kind of elements here. And if I drag and drop this up, you can see I can drag it and drop it directly onto the canvas. And so, uh, yeah, I think there's a little bit of space on the edge here. So I'm not going to be able to use this as a, as a great uh, brush. But I think that this will work pretty well for what we're trying to achieve here. So let's just delete that. Uh, and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to search for a couple of paths. Um, or maybe road. And we have a whole bunch of different ones here. We might want to use this one. I think might work really well for what we're trying to achieve here. And so make sure that you always um, use all of the tools that are available to you, right? Like you want to make sure that you're doing your searches and making it as easy on you as possible. So if we were to type in, for example, a just brush, uh, we can get all the different brushes that we have uh, already set up here, right? So here we have uh, some wooden floors and we can add in some wooden elements to it as well. And if we ever want like a little bit bigger of a uh, representation, we just have to double click on it and we'll get a nice uh, kind of uh, And just as I peruse through here, seeing what we have available. So what I think I can do is actually trade out uh, some of these. So I'm just going to delete these ones for uh, more accommodating kind of brushes here. It looks like I, I did them uh, twice here. So I'm just going to... There's this one, and then we're going to have this one. So those should work uh, pretty well. I'm going to be changing the color of these uh, so that we can have a pretty good kind of representation there. So let's delete those. 
And I think that that'll be good for right now. So uh, I'm actually going to be moving this out of the way, um, closing this down a little bit and trying to maintain a little bit more of my workspace here. And now we can expand this out and uh, I'll bring this down a little bit as well. Oh, well, originally I, I think I was actually looking for a, a road, right? So uh, let's go back and do road and we'll grab this guy as well. Perfect. And we have a really good base that we're going to start here. Uh, I'm not going to be building with these right yet. You're right. Oh, well, we, we can. We can actually. You know what? Why don't we do it? Why don't we do these right now? And I'm going to put these both on the same layer. So I'm going to do a wall and road. Uh, why don't we do our, um, our road first? So I can just grab and drop this up here. And I can set this to whatever. What am, my main concern right now is the width the width at which I'm going to be doing this. And we're going to be building up all of the different elements around it. So we don't have to be too concerned that the uh, that's going to fade in or uh, match the background here. And at any, mo any, any time, I can always um, kind of reevaluate the way that the uh, situation is going here. I'm going to turn off my uh, aspect lock ratio. And uh, I'm actually going to uh, make this a little bit taller and, uh, you know, like more narrow in relation to its height. So let's make this like four and that's going to be working a little bit better for us, I think. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to click on the edge here. And that's going to make sure that I line right up with the edge of my map. Whoop. I'm going to delete that layer because I want to do it all on this layer. Make sure that this layer is selected. I'm going to hold down control and I'm just going to make sure that I'm right up to the edge of the map. And then I'm going to click out here and let's try that one more time here. Hit escape. I'll zoom in a little bit for this. And that's pretty good. And now I'm going to just start to follow this line. And I'm not, I'm just going to pull it out and I'm going to click around. I'm not going to actually drag my mouse holding down the mouse button. I'm actually going to just click into different areas and roughly kind of follow the same kind of line that I wanted to do before. Right? So I'm just going to do something like this. And then I'm going to hold down control again and make sure that I line right up with the edge and boom, that's pretty good. It's a little bit off kilter. I should have moved it over a little bit, but I think that's going to work fine for us. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work on my wall over here. So I'm actually going to uh, start off with this rough kind of one first. And I want this to be kind of like the base, like this, this rough kind of base uh, that we're going to be building up from. And I'm actually going to use uh, my color picker here and maybe color, grab something like this. Uh, maybe we'll do it a little bit lighter than that. Uh, but I do want it to be more in the brown areas. So maybe something like this, not so not so drastic as it was before. And we can kind of manipulate this a little bit. That's a little bit too red. Maybe we'll add a little bit more green into it. Yeah, something like this. That should work out pretty well for us. And if I want to, I can hit control C and grab a hold of that hexadecimal code just in case I need to do it again. And then I want it to be kind of along the edge of this and then break away down through here. And so again, I'm going to hold down control and I'm just going to come right up to the uh, edge here. And then I'm going to start to click and you can see that this is going to, uh, work out exactly the same kind of way. Now I'm going to be covering up half of this, right? So uh, anywhere where we have some of this, uh, this weird kind of interaction here, we don't have to worry about that too much. You know, we just want, I just want that front kind of facade to be there. I think that that's that one. Yep. So now I'm going to grab uh, this one, which is a little bit more of the uh, wall that I'm kind of doing. Let's actually, let's grab this one first. I'm going to do several kind of layers of this. I want it to be uh, kind of built up like there is maybe an ancient uh, base that was then reconstructed over time and so on and so forth. So again, I'm going to hit control V 
uh, to match up these colors, as you can see. So what I'm doing is going with these rough stones in the bottom and then more refined on top, but we're maintaining that same kind of, uh, that same kind of feel. So just to the left of this, I'm going to begin again. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this a little bit wider. Not quite that wide, maybe like 1.25. Yeah, something like this. And just come right along the edge here. And then we're going to use the last one at the very end here. And we'll uh, end it right there. Great, you can see that we're developing these layers here. We're really getting to feel it already feels like that there is some height there, that we have a little bit of height value uh, without even adding in our shadows yet or anything along those lines, which is really great. And lastly, I'm going to be grabbing, I believe it's uh, this one, uh, and we're going to drop this in here. And here we have this one as well. And I am actually going to, let's see what happens if we change this color. We're going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to actually grab this and let's see if we can make it a little bit more along these lines. I'm going to be, yeah, something along these lines. I, I don't want it to be quite that dark and I want it to be pretty brown. I think so. Keep it somewhere along these areas. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's going to be a pretty good contrast there between the two. And so this will be the newest kind of iteration. And again, I think I'm going to shorten this down a little bit just so that we have a little bit more of a, uh, a tighter kind of construction between uh, the actual stone elements. And again, I'm just going to grab here. And if we wanted to, if we wanted to, uh, I'll show you a nice little uh, trick that we can do. I'm going to move it over just a little. And again, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I want this feeling that there is uh, you know, this kind of rougher base. And I'm just kind of clicking along here. And I don't have to be exact in any sort of way, right? Like I can just kind of do it this way. Now, let's say, for example, I wanted it to be like this wide uh, kind of uh, castle wall. Uh, I can come back in. I can come in uh, underneath. And now that we have, we no longer need this one, I can actually use it, right? So I can actually start to build in this painting layer as well. So if I, uh, let's do exact, uh, maybe like stone floor. And then we have all of these types of like stone floors that we can go in. And I think that actually the one that I want to use here, um, there is a nice uh, kind of uh, in the interior map pack too, I think that there is a nice, um, in the floor area here. Uh, yeah, we could use something along these lines, I think, uh, to work pretty well. And these are all great, too. Uh, these can be used as brushes. So, like, for example, uh, we can pull it out this way. You can see that there is a little divide in there, uh, but that's okay, too. But many of these elements uh, will all work uh, as a brush. So if I just click and drag it out, you can see here we can paint out uh, areas very quickly. So anything that is a repeating kind of pattern, uh, make sure that you are aware that all of this stuff uh, we can easily kind of use in the brushes scenario here. So if I wanted to, uh, I could also, and then I would make this a little bit more narrow. Let's make it uh, maybe like three. So something along these lines. And then I could just pull this out. And if I wanted to underneath here, I could uh, create, uh, whoop, I forgot that this is in the... Uh, Let's put that back to normal. Ooh, look, big, look at that there. Let's um, erase that element. And we'll erase this as well. And we might as well uh, just get rid of all of this stuff that we don't want to have poking out from anywhere. All taken care of. Uh, so once we switch back over here, uh, what I can do is if I wanted to build, uh, for example, the um, interior of the wall, if I if I wanted to be have a big kind of flat space out there, um, 
I could easily kind of uh, connect in through here and then build the other side to it and do lots of fun stuff. Oh, let's see. We have a we have a, a comment here from uh, Bombus Bomb. Had an error the other day using brushes and drawing a square. My third corner uh, would always fail and it would turn into a triangle. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, Let's see. Well, let me uh, let me uh, let's see what we can do here. So if I pull out a square, uh, I'm going to make a new painting layer so I can just easily delete it, and we'll do it over here. Uh, but it seems I don't seem to have uh, any issues at the current. Did you did you have only have it the one time, uh, Bombus, or did, was it ab able to be reproduced? If you if you um, uncover a bug like that, please let us know. Uh, we can certainly Oh yes. Yeah, you were so what you were actually doing was um, doing something along these lines. And then use the shift and double clicking it to connect. Yeah, if you ever um, uh, uncover a bug like that, uh, the best thing to do is see if you can recreate it. Uh, and if you can, uh, certainly let us know. We'll get it fixed straight away. Oh, have you? Yes, uh, control click. It works great. And if here's a nice little trick for you guys. If you're trying to do a square, if you're unaware of this, right? Uh, here, I'll make this uh, one uh, cross so that we can kind of do this. So if I'm using the control click technique, right, and I'm going to click right in the middle of this one and then pull this out, and then maybe I'm going to bring this all the way up uh, to here, and then I'm going to line this up, right? So I'm going to click right in the middle of this square. Now I can hold down shift, and if I double click, it'll automatically connect it. And that's a really uh, great way that you can... Um, uh, create your own shapes uh, really easily. So uh, while drawing, anything that you want, uh, when you want to connect the edge like this to here, I accidentally uh, double clicked over here. Uh, but if we're drawing out an area and I want to uh, connect this, I just hold shift and I double click and it will automatically connect my line uh, together. Oh yes, joining at the corner might be a little bit more difficult. It's a shift double click. So to, to connect it, we hold down control to snap to the grid if you want to. Uh, and then if you hold down shift and double click, it'll automatically uh, connect it to itself, which is a really great, um, easy little trick that you guys can do. So let's make this uh, like too wide. And again, I can grab this and uh, I can select a color if I want to. You can see that we can uh, match this up pretty well. I think that that's a little bit too much. I w actually want, um, let's, let's go in here and get something that's a little bit lighter here. And you can actually zoom in here um, quite well. And you can always change the colors after the fact. Uh, so this doesn't have to be done when you put it down. But we can zoom right in and I can... Uh, select any of these colors that I want to. And uh, with this layer selected, uh, I can, again, I can hold down control to select uh, the edge there. And then uh, I can start to build out uh, a section on the inside. And I'm just gonna double click uh, down here, as you can see, and then I could uh, build up the other side of it as well. But I think I'm actually gonna keep it uh, just a very uh, typical kind of uh, fortification wall. Maybe we'll do some wood on the inside in places uh, and things along those lines. So I think we'll delete that for right now. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to start to build up our terrain. And we can do this a whole bunch of different ways. And the way that I usually uh, dive in and do a lot of this stuff is I actually use the uh, winter map pack. And one of the great things about um, 
uh, if you have the art subscription or uh, you have access to all of these. And so they all mix and match, match exceptionally well. And if we get into our brushes, we have a whole bunch of brushes that work. And one of the reasons why I use the uh, winter matte pack often is because a lot of the elements are very light and white, uh, which allows us complete and full control over the color. So we're able to make it anything that we wish. So here we have a winter road, uh, a winter um, road, and we could actually use this if we wanted to, uh, in place of that, uh, because and just let me just demonstrate this uh, for example. But we have a whole bunch of other ridges and stuff that I want to use and, and cliff kind of edges. But uh, with this selected, uh, I can now uh, make this into any color, as you can see here. And that's one of the huge advantages of uh, the color system that we have in Fantasy Grounds. So make sure that you uh, take a full kind of um, uh, control over that. Uh, and that's why a lot of the uh, newer elements that kind of come out are oftentimes in a grayscale or they're lighter than you might expect because that actually allows you uh, to completely manipulate the image. And I can even do crazy kind of colors with this and do lots of unexpected kind of things here, which is super fun. But what I'm actually interested in is maybe some of these ones, right? Like some of these, not necessarily the ones that have these uh, kind of crystalline patterns, but something along this. So I can grab this and I can do exactly the same kind of thing and I can help to build up the edges of the cliff that I'm actually trying to create here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, could there be a subscription option that is more expensive and makes it so all the new art packs are permanently part of your downloads? I have a hard time subscribing to something that doesn't make me have anything in the long run. Uh, I do not, I don't have any control over that kind of side of things. Uh, you can certainly um, post something on the forums about it or along those lines. Uh, from a, a monetary point of view, I, I don't have any sort of uh, idea about the logistics of um, the amount of money that goes in and out and, and for that. So I don't know if that's a, a feasible kind of uh, expectation. But I think that at the current, um, uh, here, here's actually my, I, I do a lot of subscriptions and I'll, I'm going to tell you guys why. Uh, like I, I use uh, Photoshop, for example, which requires a subscription now and there's a whole bunch of other things. My whole thought process is if I decide not to have the subscription anymore, then I'm probably no longer uh, interested in using the product. So if I uh, were to come into a scenario and uh, let's say, for example, I'm going to play a game that requires a subscription. Um, then when I no longer wish to play the game and I cancel the subscription, then I don't really care if I have access to it anymore. And that's usually the way that I think about it. So if I'm going to be using the art products uh, for a time or whatever, and then you can always pick up the um, subscription again. It's $5 a month and you're going to have access to all of those things again. Um, but that, that's just my own pers uh, personal kind of um, view on the subject. Um, and I certainly understand like wanting to own and keep everything. Um, so that's what, how I kind of got into doing a lot of this anyways, because I really was interested in creating uh, some of the, I couldn't find certain elements and so I would just create them myself. So here, let's grab and create a new painting layer. And again, I'm going to grab this tint. And I can actually do this after the fact, too. Why don't we do that? Uh, because then, and I'll show you the advantage of doing it this way and some of the other ways as well. I'm actually going to do it again. Or, whoop, I want to switch it. So here's another trick that you guys want to know. So if you start to make a line and it's going in the opposite way that you want, all you have to do is flip it. And then when you do it, it'll come right uh, to the other side. It'll, it'll uh, change the whole kind of perspective of this. And I'm going to just kind of build it around here. And then we'll have a little bit of separation and we can do even some variations. And then maybe it'll come back and uh, I'll hold down control and we'll snap it right to the edge here. Now what I can do is I can switch back over into uh, my layers tab 
and uh, I can actually grab the color picker. I can do exactly the same thing, except now it's going to be for the entire layer, uh, which means that any time I use any of these other light elements, and we can use something like this too. You know, this has a lot of like cool kind of elements to it. We might even do that underneath it. Uh, but we can now change this, right? I can do exactly the same kind of thing. And we can change that. Uh, and as I said, it's a layer based. So now anything that I grab and use over here, it's going to be used in that way as well. Now that's a little bit too dark for me. So I'm just going to uh, move it up here. Uh, let's zoom in here. Maybe I'll grab uh, something like this. Uh, that's a little bit too light. So I'm going to come in and maybe do like that. Yeah, that seems to be just about right. And, um, oh, did you play games? Yeah, I, I think that, so um, to put it in a little bit of a perspective, I believe that there are 33 um, products out now. Uh, and I think, th I think that there is, it's about $330 worth or more, or maybe it's like 300, it's over $300 worth of products that we've released. Uh, in the last year for the art uh, packs and uh, themes alone. Uh, so that's a pretty heavy investment, I understand, uh, you know, for uh, trying to keep concurrent with everything. So uh, for me personally, I think that the $5 a month is a, is a pretty good um, uh, a bargain for that because you get access to everything that we've released and everything that we're going to release. And um, so you're getting, uh, we, I try to get at least three products out per month. Uh, which is a pretty substantial amount of images. I think that I was just looking the other day and there's over like 3,600 images that are in them as well. So uh, that's quite a lot. That's quite a lot. And that's not including uh, themes, right? So, And we can actually, and here's another really cool trick that you guys uh, might not be aware of that I like to do oftentimes is you can duplicate these layers uh, for example, and I can just uh, move these in and in this kind of scenario, I can just change these a little bit, right? And move them around and watch this. I can drop this underneath and I can start to create lots and lots of different variations and elements here. And you can see how quickly I can start to build these kind of uh, things together here. Uh, one of the things that we, I can actually do is, is change the width of this, right? So I can... Uh, add a lot of different uh, variety uh, with only having to pull that out one time. And I could do this several times. I could even uh, make several, several iterations of this. And we could even grab this as well. And no, I don't want to put it in there. Uh, we actually want to uh, uh, put it into this, this particular area here. Not that one, this one. And now with this, and let me just demonstrate this really quickly. Anything that I paint on this particular area here, you see it's going to match the colors that I've already picked. I don't have to mess around with this stuff uh, any further. So maybe we can even make a little bit. You can see that this is going to work really well for what we want to do as well. So I think what I'll do is uh, let's move these over. I'm going to grab both of these. And with holding down control and using my arrow keys, I can move this pixel by pixel. Because I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move these over and I'm going to do uh, this other one on top here. And again, I'm going to flip it so that I can make sure that I uh, get it going in the right direction here. And uh, I, I think I'm going to do it uh, like somewhere in here. Let's make this just a little bit wider. And maybe like 2.5. Yeah, something like this. And I'm just going to move it over like this and uh, begin to build out my other edge here. Now, I don't have to be too uh, concerned about uh, how these interact here. And I want to have a little bit of variation where it kind of over. And we'll pull this down and do something like that. Now these areas in here where it gets a little bit wonky, we're going to be covering up with some stuff too, so I'm not too concerned with that. But what I actually want to do is uh, get this lined up a little bit better. So I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to move this back. 
until I find something that's pretty good that I want to do here. And I can also uh, change this a little bit. And you can see I can actually manipulate how this interacts by changing the distance here. And that looks pretty good. And if this is a little bit too long, I can always come in here and grab my eraser. Let me move this down so that I can actually just begin to uh, manipulate that back. We want to make sure I'm on the correct layer here. But here we can just uh, start to uh, move this back a little bit. So you have a lot of control here, even after the fact. And that's one of the things that I think is super fun, is that even once you've laid down uh, some of the uh, information, uh, you can go back and readjust it over and over again. So here we have uh, all three of our kind of elements here. We're going to be building this up here. We're going to be doing lots of uh, cool stuff here. And we can do this lots of different ways, too. We can actually build this up with rocks and do all kinds of stuff. So this should be super fun. I think what I'm actually going to go into now is the Abyssal uh, art package. Uh, so if you go to the FG Abyss, and in here we have all kinds of cool decorations that we can use. And we have a lot of um, uh, cliff kind of elements as well. But we have all of this stuff and lots of different rock textures and uh, all of these stuff. And these are these are some of my favorite ones that uh, that really work exceptionally well for uh, quickly uh, generating a lot of uh, texture. And if we go into uh, our brushes as well, you're going to see that you do have a whole bunch. Here's another road brush. As you can see here, this one is much more, um, there's a lot of like craters and things. I use this a lot of times to also do like sci-fi landscapes. And these all, this also works exceptionally well as a brush. So if we switch back over here, and you can see, uh, I can just pull this out and uh, it's all uh, ready to go there. But I think what I actually want to do is grab some of these more uh, rocky kind of textures like this. And again, I'm going to be changing. Uh, we're going to see that this is actually, uh, once if I stamp this down, a little bit too dark. So I'm going to have to make a new uh, painting layer there. A little bit too cumbersome. And some of these other elements as well. Uh, whoop. I'm going to make sure we switch to the right tool here. Uh, you can see that these aren't going to uh, quite fit into the scenario here. I don't want to use anything that's got like craters or make something that look like it is on an alien planet. I want to keep this quite natural. But what we could do is go into, I think, the uh, underground. And a lot of this is experimentation. So make sure that you try a lot of stuff. And you could actually use a lot of these uh, elements as well to create um, these kind of uh, areas here. Like we have this stone path and whatnot, but I, this is the one that I'm actually uh, thinking about using. Ooh, Dark Darth has a question. Do you use other art creation packages? Um, I, I have not on, on the stream. Nope. I use these ones because they are the most familiar with me uh, since I made them. Uh, and I, I don't actually get a lot of chance uh, to look at any of the other art packages out there that are on the store. Uh, very, very rarely. So 90% of my time that is spent uh, in my work is just creating new art packages. So trying to create three new art products a month uh, takes up a great deal of my time because I also have to do a lot of maintenance on uh, themes and trying to keep them up to date with new stuff that's coming out. So unfortunately, I don't get a lot of uh, time to experiment with some of the other stuff that's out there. But I would, I wish I could. And if we create a new uh, painting layer here, as you can see, I could uh, do like all kinds of rocks down here at the bottom. I think what I'm going to do is make these uh, quite a bit smaller.
and uh, we can just kind of uh, do these right along the edge here. I like this because this is kind of makes it feel like that there's like this debris. Like rocks have fallen and uh, just do something like this. So we could do a couple of layers of that. So I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller again. And we'll do some that kind of come out like this. I really like creating these kind of like debris brushes. We'll do some that come along this edge. And then once we come back in here and we start to add in all of our shadows, I think that this is really going to come to the forefront as feeling like that there is a lot of depth here. And like I said, I think we should do some water uh, down here as well. But we're getting some really nice separation here. Yeah, that's correct, uh, Play Games Patty. Thank you. I do. Uh, if anybody ever asks, uh, I will always, um, for the stream, I can demonstrate anything that there is on the art store or uh, an art package or map pack or token pack that is in the store itself. I'm more than happy to, uh, to download it and uh, show off all of its contents. This is a great brush too, and I think that I'll actually grab this and put this down in my hot car, hot bar for later. The hot key bar. Great. So the next thing I think we're going to do is we're going to start to build up all of the different... Uh, we, I think I'll keep this ground texture down here, but I want to do some stuff up here. And uh, this might actually work really well too uh, for right in through here. So if I wanted to... Uh, maybe add in some rocks like through here. I could certainly do it. Uh, I forgot that we, uh, the, um, that element is in there and then we have also uh, changed the color. So I'm just going to delete those. So before we get too much further, uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put in a, uh, a shadow layer uh, just so I can get a good understanding of uh, my values here. So I'm just going to call this one shadow and uh, we'll grab uh, actually this, this brush that I just grabbed here. And what I've been doing lately, uh, instead of adjusting my uh, shadow here, I'm going to be doing it in my layers tab. So I think what I'll do is uh, just kind of come in here and we'll do this nice uh, cast shadow uh, coming off of here. So with a brush like this, it is uh, super easy to use and you really, uh, we can shorten this down to maybe something like that, but what we're really interested in is our width here. So here I want to have a much, a much broader kind of, of shadow coming off. So I might change this to something like five, right? Uh, where this is going to be here and then we're going to have this nice little shadow that's kind of along the edge here. And once we lower the opacity, you're going to see how this is going to work. And then I'm going to bring it around. I'm going to actually kind of come in and around this way. And this shadow might actually be better if we do it underneath. But we'll leave it right there for right now. And now we'll switch back over. And we select our color picker here. And you can see now where oh, we're going to start to create some really nice subtle shadows. That is really going to help settle, sell this, um, this elevation. And if we do it this way, we can always readjust the shadows which I find a very, very um, uh, helpful. Because what I would like to do is come back and probably come in, uh, create a lower um, shadow. So we'll do uh, another one that's underneath all of these. And here, what I'm actually gonna do is, uh, let's rename this one as well to, maybe we'll just call it like shadow uh, lower. And here, what I'm actually going to do is make this uh, quite a bit narrower. So maybe something along these lines. Well, that's a little bit too much. And again, I'm going to hold Control just to select the edge there and then let go of it. And we can kind of come along here. And again, I can switch back over and uh, use the... Uh, controls here to adjust this.
And they also, one of the great things I can do by using it this way is I can move this up. And if I want to include some of these other layers in there, uh, you can see how quickly and easily I can start to add in all of these different elements. I could add in a, actually another little shadow element right along here. And even with this uh, selected, as you can see, I can do several passes uh, with this. Let's make this a little bit uh, wider, maybe something like that. And this is where we can start to do like our little bit of a, a ambient occlusion along this edge. So uh, as we get closer to this little edge down here, uh, we might have um, a little bit dark, more, more uh, or a little bit darker of an area. We can even make it smaller and smaller and get it more and more precise. And this is a really great kind of um, uh, introduction into actually creating uh, elevation elements uh, without necessarily needing a very clear-cut kind of understanding of the uh, or pre-designed kind of element itself. Uh, the way that we uh, identify elevation uh, naturally from our eye is through light and shadow. So when something casts a shadow like this, right, so we can come in here and if I make this even uh, another pass of this through here, as you can see, uh, this just helps sell to us. And, you know, I can actually just kind of drag this out maybe to like something like that. And, you know, it just it just re-solidifies all of that in our mind. So we can do uh, several iterations of that if we so wish. And now what I'm actually going to do uh, before I start to add in any, we could actually uh, create this and make this feel uh, like it's an elevation on this side without adding any other elements to it. We can do it just with shadows. So we can do uh, a lot with all of these. Uh, but one of, one of the things that I want to add in next is I want to do some different kind of ground textures, uh, maybe some grass patches and something along those lines. And we're all going to do that right underneath these shadows. And one of the reasons why I put the shadows in right now is it helps give me a really good understanding of my values, where I'm going to have my lights and my darks. Uh, and I think that this is plenty dark enough, and I think that we don't have to add in too much extra uh, information there. And uh, if we move up in here, Oh, thanks, DJ Breaktime. I'm I I'm glad. But DJ Breaktime says that I've helped him, uh, taught him a lot about how to add elements to make really lifelike maps, which uh, I'm so happy. Uh, one of my goals is to make the uh, best map making uh, community that we could possibly have. Uh, I think that, um, and uh, I I'm I'm so uh, grateful to you guys for joining me every Saturday and and uh, give me a reason to do all this stuff. So that's, it's a two-way street. So I'm actually going to come up in here and we're going to start to move into some of these other art packages. And we can actually use, again, like I said, uh, I use the uh, winter art pack a lot, a lot. Uh, but in the new underground art package, we actually have some of these really cool effects, uh, which um, I really like to use as well. So if I drag and drop this over, as you can see, we got these like piles of stones and whatnot. And these work great as well. And we're going to be doing this with the stamp tool. And I'm going to actually lower down uh, my opacity here. And you can see, like, if with this selected, if I start to stamp, it's going to immediately make a new layer for me. So I don't have to worry too much about that. And I'm just doing this uh, for texture. I'm going to be dropping this down in a moment. Uh, this is just going to further kind of uh, cement the idea. And we can layer some of these on top of each other. And you can see when I drop this down underneath all these other layers, we just get this really nice subtle uh, transfer of uh, information here. And you can see that that just little variation, it's just so, um, hopefully you guys can see it on Twitch, but it's just a very subtle kind of uh, transition there, uh, which just identifies that you have a whole bunch of different debris that kind of is coming out from the edge here. 
and we can actually even do some uh, up above here as well. So uh, where we have this um, uh, shadow lower here, uh, we have this layer here. So in between these layers, or maybe even above it, up through here, uh, I'm going to add in some more of these. So I'm going to do some off of this wall, and uh, and we can do a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So I'm actually going to uh, oh, let's make sure that these are all our players can see all these. So let's see, that's this one. So yeah, let's let's use this one. So I'm actually going to build out a little bit here. And again, this is just going to break up uh, some of that stuff. And one of the things that you want to do as you're doing this is uh, change the size and rotation as you're just stamping this around. And we can do some on the other side as well. We can get a whole bunch of... Uh, And I'm actually going to do some on here. And we're going to be using a couple of different textures. But you can see that this is just, I just love like this kind of stuff, like adding these textures and doing a whole bunch of other kind of elements here. Great. And um, I'm not sure. There, how, you know, I, some of these art packages came out a year ago, so uh, it's hard for me to remember exactly what's in each one. But let's grab some of the elements. I think that we have some good stuff in... Um, I want to do some grass as well. Uh, so we'll do the 2019 art package. And in our decorations here... We have a whole bunch of nice uh, texture elements. Maybe something along these lines. This is always a good one. And I'm just going to break up some of these edge elements. And maybe even drop down my opacity a bit here. And I'm going to start to blend uh, some of this stuff together. And we'll be adding in all of our stones and whatnot too into all of our individual shadows that I like to do. And we'll do some larger kind of elements. We might even do like some big kind of stuff like uh, areas of the road that just kind of gets pushed back and yeah that's looking pretty good now let's add in some of our grass stuff and you can see that we have uh, some really cool kind of texture stuff and this is great for like a swampy um, bottoms and, or like a, and then we have ones that are like um, a whole bunch of different uh, kinds of uh, forest floors and whatnot, which I really enjoy doing them. But I think I'm actually going to use this one uh, for most of my grass. And one of the things that I like to do in these particular types of environments, um, the as you move up into higher elevations, uh, if you guys are unaware of this, uh, oftentimes the foliage and um, um, gets darker. It requires a, a darker kind of pigment to for it to uh, exist. So um, the, some of the subtleties of doing something along these lines um, is uh, doing that kind of transitions, right? So we want to make sure that we kind of adhere to that. Where we have maybe some elevation here, you know, the earth is going to be a little bit darker. Uh, the Everything is going to be a little bit darker. And that's going to help kind of give us that idea that this is a mountainous kind of landscape. All right, we have a question from Test Subject. Uh, would it be possible to get familiar with uh, this process via the Unity demo? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, the, the, all of the uh, functionality is completely available to you um, in the demo version. You do not have to have a license to get in here and start to make maps at all. Uh, you do have to have a license in order to get the art subscription, I believe, but I'm not exactly sure. Uh, that's something that would have to ask 
uh, some of the customer service guys. But um, you can import any of your own images or any Im images that you own, uh, which is a super easy thing to do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, are you using a pen tablet or mouse and keyboard? Mouse and keyboard. I do uh, make most of the art products uh, with a uh, pen and tablet, but whenever I do my streams, I do everything just with a mouse and keyboard, so it's easily uh, replicatable by anybody who is watching. So there's a couple of ways that I can darken this up. I can either uh, drop down to the opacity and allow a lot of this stuff to come through, uh, or I can actually change the color here, right? I can come in and actually make much darker grass. So I can actually do a combination of the two, right? which I think is going to work really well for us. And for this particular element, uh, I'm going to actually add in a new um, layer here. And one of the things that I'm actually going to do is I want to overlay on some of this stuff because that's going to make us some really cool kind of overlay effects. And uh, so I'm going to be adjusting the uh, opacity here a little bit. Oh, uh, Duck Punch says, uh, can't wait. Um, you and your friends are starting a Pirates AP on FG. Oh, that's going to be so cool. Yeah. Yeah, you bet, Test Subject. And I'm here every Saturday from about 3 till 6 usually. Uh, I'm probably going to end a little bit early today after we finish this map, uh, just because I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. But usually 3 hours every Saturday. And this is what we do. I uh, usually go over all of the art-related news, uh, tips and trips, tips and trips? That doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> tips and tricks and tutorials and uh, all of the art-related kind of stuff that's going on here. So here again, uh, and this is one of the really cool things that we can do here. Uh, watch this. If I start to add in some elements, uh, I can actually here, I'm going to erase this because that's kind of over out there. But we can use this uh, to um, make like moss covered stones and whatnot. So if I drop down my opacity here a little bit more, you can see that I can kind of just put this over here and we can uh, begin to really add in some cool elements like this. Perhaps this has been here a while and then I'll just increase my opacity and we can start to put down some nice little uh, patches of grass here. Now, I think that this it might be a little bit too saturated in its color. Uh, so I can just jump over into my Layers tab, and I can actually adjust uh, this here as well. I can, I can lower the opacity, uh, but what I think I'm actually going to do is just um, bring down the green a little bit just so it's not quite as um i don't think there's any blue in it anyway but i just don't want it to be quite as vibrant i want it to be a little bit uh, and we'll drop this down and i'm going to drop this down quite a bit now and i'm actually going to build up some layers here so make sure i have my stamp tool selected and i'm going to start to just kind of stamp this out. I want this to be a little bit of a more, you can see that that is a much more believable kind of high altitude uh, foliage color. And what I'm doing at this moment is I'm just clicking around as I build out in areas. Uh, I hold down the shift key and I can use my mouse wheel to uh, rotate the image. And if I hold down control, I can change its size. And so, yeah, then we can start to add in some of these different elements like this. And the other great thing is if I decide that I'm doing some stuff and I want to get rid of it, I can jump right in here and erase uh, anything that I put down, which is a really great way to kind of uh, go back and forth and create some interesting kind of shapes here.
And I think what I'll do is I'll just build out a couple of little areas and through here. Oh, thanks, test subject. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be. I, I think that I just I ate something that isn't quite agreeing with me. I don't think that I have an actual kind of illness or anything. I just think it's a little bit of like a intestinal discomfort. Oh, yes, yeah. That would be cool, DJ Break Time, uh, who said, uh, speaking of pirates, ships and the like would make an awesome uh, art pack. So we, we do have, uh, there is a couple of things already. There's a complete underwater art package. Uh, to build underwater areas just like that. Uh, and there is also another um, uh, coastlines and ships art package. But I'm going to be doing an updated version of those. I have like a medieval docks uh, art pack that I've done and a whole bunch of uh, updated kind of ship stuff as well. So yeah, that'll be that'll be on the horizon. Yeah, yeah, ocean storms and the like. Now, I'm not going to do any of this uh, over here yet because I really want to jump over here and do some of this, but I am going to do some uh, down here. So uh, right on the same top layer, uh, I don't have to worry about it too much. I'm just going to jump right over in here and do this. Now, the one thing that is uh, a little bit uh, off-putting for me right now is this kind of divide right in through here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to actually add in some additional elements over here as well. And I think I will add in just a little hint of water on this side uh, once we get towards the end here. Now you see that this is going to uh, kind of change the dynamic here. Uh, and I'm going to explain to you why. Uh, it, whether you're aware of this or not, uh, your eye is going to always pick up on this. And that is things that get further away from you, from the viewer. And we are the viewer, right? So. When we're looking at this from our top-down perspective, we're the viewer who is way up above, uh, up in the clouds, looking down. So to help sell uh, elevation, uh, some things that are further away and closer to our eye are, uh, from the viewer's perspective, uh, we have to take into account uh, the desaturation, or not the, really the desaturation, but the, uh, the, the lower contrast of things that are further away. So things that are closer need to be have much uh, greater diversity in their dark and lights, and things that are further away should be less. Because this is darker than here, this is going to um, really kind of interfere with uh, selling the fact that this may be 40 or 50 feet down uh, a cliff face. So how do we circumvent that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the color of the grass down here. So what I'm actually going to do... Wait, let me cancel that and switch over and now let's do it. Okay. What I want to do is I want to bring it more towards the blue because in the atmosphere, everything shifts towards the blue as things move further away from our eye. And I want to make sure, and I'm also going to uh, uh, increase all of these so that it's going to be lighter in general. And you can see that this is going to uh, really kind of change. This is going to feel much further away now just because of that slight color shift. Just a very subtle kind of shift in color. And this can also be done uh, with effects layers. Uh, and I could probably uh, demonstrate that to you guys as well. We'll do, we'll do this entire region down here uh, with an effects layer. So let's create a new effects layer, and we're going to make this one a uh, color adjust. And what we're actually going to do is increase the blue value. And we're going to add in a mask. And then we are going to reveal this area down here. And now what we're going to do is just adjust this. And you can see that that makes it feel further away, right? Like just by adding in a little bit more blue. And it also lightens the area just slightly. 
Uh, these little tips uh, for doing things along these lines can be super beneficial. We'll just blur the edge so it's not so harsh. Uh, for really uh, trying to sell the variations here. So you can see that now that our colors of our shadows are a little bit blue. And here they're much darker. And this feels like it's much closer to us than that down there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this little shadow brush once again. Whoop, let's make sure we switch back into our painting tab here. And I'm going to drop this down. And in my shadow uh, tab here, I'm going to actually just kind of follow along here. I'm going to make this uh, one wide. And I want to do a little bit more shadow coming right off of this edge here. And there's actually another shadow brush that I think might work better for this. So let's just type in the word. Oh, let's let's go all the way up and type in the word shadow. I can actually do a shadow brush, I think. And it's this one, this edged one. And you can see that this is a uh, rather um, hard edge, uh, but then it's a fade on the other side. And so when I pull this out, you can see that it's just going to uh, be this kind of thing. And that's, that's kind of what I want. I'm going to follow this actually uh, right along the edge here. So you can see, whoop, I didn't mean to do that. We'll get rid of that. So you can see when I start to draw this out, I want to make sure that it's going in the right direction. So I'm just going to flip it here. I think that if I, if I come right along here, a little bit, a little bit over, I guess like here, yeah. And I think I want it to be a little bit wider here, maybe something like two. Yeah, something just like this. And I'm actually going to be a little bit more careful with this one. And I want to uh, kind of just make sure that I get all of uh, some of these elements in here as I just maneuver this around here. Now again, I can adjust this after the fact, so it doesn't have to be super, um, I don't have to be too much. And I'm going to be adding in some uh, different elements on top of that, so I think that's going to work pretty good, actually. And now I'm actually going to grab, I wonder what we have for uh, straight up textures if I just type this in. Uh, we have uh, mostly stuff for um, regional maps. Let's see what happens when we type in ground. And we're beginning adding in some like a whole bunch of different rocks and whatnot. Yeah, you bet, Spencer. It's called Atmospheric Perspective, if you want to uh, do any more research on it. As things move away from you, as things are further away from you, uh, they will have uh, the darks and lights become closer together. They have less contrast, and they shift to the blue. I think that ground is not going to be helpful for us. Uh, let's see. Maybe if we go into the... bubbles and things in here.
Now let's go into the winter art package. We have lots of different um, these things that will work exceptionally well, I think. I do believe. And we also have uh, in their decorations. And the, one, of the, one of the things that will be really helpful is if we use, we can use these kind of elements and we can change them to whatever colors we wish. And uh, once we get done with this little area over here, then we'll switch back over and I'm going to create a new painting layer and drop this above the shadow because uh, I want to build on top of the shadow and kind of just uh, remove some of that edge a little bit. So maybe we'll take something like this. You see it's got a little bit of texture in there. Uh, maybe we'll do Maybe we'll do something like this. This will probably work a little bit better. And again, I'm just going to grab a color over here, maybe something like that. Maybe a little bit darker. And we'll drop down the opacity as well. And I'm going to start to uh, stamp this around. Let's drop down the opacity a bit more. Whoop. Don't want to right click. That's a little bit too far out there. And I'm going to just uh, kind of make a more common uh, top element here. I think it might be time to start to get a new mouse. I found that uh, my, 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 my mice, is it mice? Uh, tend to only last me, um, I think I've had this one for, uh, uh, I guess maybe almost a year. I guess it's pretty good. Ooh, a test subject asks, are there any art packs that depict tracked and treaded vehicle passage? Not yet. Nope. Uh, we actually just came out with our first sci-fi art packages uh, a couple months back. And... Uh, but there will be some modern uh, kind of art packs coming out soon. I want to do modern uh, and uh, kind of like Victorian era stuff as well. And now what I'm going to do is, uh, that's a little bit too intrusive. So I'm just going to come back in and adjust the opacity from my layers, I just want to have like a nice little, just to break up a little bit of that and make this seem a little bit more consistent there. Yeah, that's great. Uh, now I'm gonna uh, worry about this area over here and then we're gonna add in all of our little uh, incidental items as well. We can do um, like rocks and, and uh, little uh, rock formations and all kinds of stuff like that. I'll show you guys how you can build um, some rock formations with um, um, lots of different elements. Oh, that's a good idea, uh, uh, Bombest. Bombest? Bombest Bomb? Yes, that's right. So Spencer says uh, you could uh, take this path and make it smaller and darker and create your own tracks. You can also do lots of really cool things too. Um, and let me just uh, get on a little uh, sidetrack here. Uh, so let's say, for example, 
Uh, let's grab one of these uh, stone brushes, right? And now I'm going to turn it to the side and make it smaller. And again, uh, let's 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 make it black. I'll make a new painting layer just for demonstrations. But when we turn it sideways, and we can now do it this way, as you can see here. So you can do uh, again. You can do the same kind of thing. So if we wanted to drop down our opacity, you could totally make um, some crazy stuff. Maybe we want, don't want to drop down our opacity that much. But like uh, for like treads and stuff, you want to have a greater buffer on the edge. Uh, but you can see a kind of thing, and you can actually use this to make like steps and stairs and stuff as well. So if we if we reset this. You can do all kinds of uh, interesting kind of interactions here. Let's go into uh, what rocks should we use? Let's let's try the uh, two thousand. There's so many rocks. So if I just type in rock, for example, uh, there are just uh, tons and tons of stuff. Uh, this is from the underwater one. That's kind of like algae covered. I'm just going to kind of peruse here and see if there is a particular style. Yeah, I think we're just going to do with the, the 2019 art package. And if I go into my decorations here, I can just type in rock. Oh, you can use any any real uh, brush for that. Here, I'll, let me let me just demonstrate again before I before I get. Uh, I'll just come up into the 2019. So here we have all of our different brushes. So let's say, for example, I'll just take. Oh, let's take this one, right? So uh, normally, and I'll make a new painting layer so that normally this is going to make like a wavy kind of road. Well, if you just turn it to the side, uh, and then we can it'll make a repeating pattern uh, if, you, if you put it in a horizontal fashion. And then if you want it to come over and uh, we could then darken it up to whatever you wished. You can even make it a little bit faded and boom. So you can do it with any, any anything whatsoever. Super easily depending on what you want for your pattern and whatnot. So basically all you want to do is find um, something in... So find a shape that is what you want it to be. So if we went into the sci-fi art pack, for example, I think that there is actually some really good shapes in there that you could use. Uh, spaceships... No, I want the... Um, sci-fi interiors. And in our walls, you have all of these neat shapes. So take something for like this, for example. And because we're doing it with our line tool, right, we can do something like that. So you can, and you can just flip it and make all kinds of cool things. I guess we can just delete that. All right, let's go back into the 2019 art pack, and I'm just going to type in rock. And uh, we'll, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, one of the things that, uh, especially with the ability to control all the different colors and opacities, uh, so you can use anything that you uh, can possibly think of for many, many different uh, avenues, which is super fun. And I think I'm actually going to use some of these rounded rock pieces uh, in this. Uh, I want to have a nice kind of definition between the jaggedness here, maybe in the rounded, or maybe not. Maybe we want to have some sort of consistency. So maybe we'll use uh, these pieces. And... Um, 
I'm actually going to, let's, uh, I don't need the, the road anymore, so let's clear these out. But I'm going to keep my shadow brushes right down there. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to grab these and I'm going to drop them right down here. Now we may want to come back to these uh, after the fact, but uh, this way I'll have an easy kind of access to them. And I can even close this down if I want to. Uh, using my uh, hotkey bars has exponentially increased the speed at which that I can create maps. It is so much better. So let's uh, grab some of these elements. So for example, I'm going to grab this guy out. And one of the reasons why I like this so much with the faded edge on it uh, is because this allows me to build much larger kind of constructs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up some uh, rocky edges around here. And then we'll adjust the colors all in the layer and uh, maybe even some of the opacities and whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, that's a great idea, Spencer. So Spencer said you could use the water rock effect uh, you were showing as puddles along the road. And that's absolutely true. And I'm actually, uh, we could do some puddles and stuff, and I'll show you guys how to do it with effects layers. And uh, you can do it uh, really super easy, and it's fun. So I'm just going to start with my stamp tool and stamping these around. You can see uh, by changing the size and the rotation, uh, I can actually begin to create um, a lot of different uh, elements here. And I'm going to go right over, I'm going to actually be dropping this down in behind. And this is going to look a little bit wonky uh, at first, but once we add in all of our shadow information and we change our colors a little bit, uh, so it blends in with the rest of the stuff that we're doing, uh, this is going to start to work uh, really well. And now I can see, you can see, I can start to jump between these. And I don't have to worry too much about how the uh, interaction here is going to work, right? So I can uh, come back to this one and add on some additional elements here. By using the same rock shapes in these different iterations, I maintain a certain amount of consistency across all of the images, right? And don't forget, we can change uh, all of these different parameters as well to further augment uh, that idea that these are not the same. And I can always reset the image. And uh, we can change maybe this to like these flat little uh, edges here. I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of blend it in here and start to create some elevation elements here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take um, a like a dirt kind of brush and then go back over the top of these and really make them feel like that they're coming up out of the ground. And again, I think I'm going to do like 1.5 here. Excellent. And now let's switch over to our Layers tab here. And let's change our colors here. We can actually just grab uh, this and maybe do something like this. And that's a little bit too much. And that's a little bit better. And I think that once we uh, add in uh, some additional elements on top and, and our shadows, uh, that's going to work really well. So I'm just going to uh, type rocks uh, in here. So we just double click on a layer to rename it. And now uh, when I pull this up, right, I can actually, you know what I think I'm going to actually do? I'll show you guys uh, how you can really kind of manipulate the system here. Uh, let's uh, type in uh, snow again. 
And probably more specifically, let's just do um, snow effect. And I'll go right to these elements. And I'm going to grab one of these that has a little bit of texture to them. I, I don't want one, maybe something like this. Make sure that we're in our tab here. And again, uh, I'm just going to uh, kind of, whoop. I want to match it up with these kind of colors as much as I can here. I think a little bit lighter than that is going to work good. Let me hit cancel and let's zoom in here so we can. And as you can see, we can zoom in as much as we want to uh, and then grab our color picker. Uh, I'm going to make uh, my guy a little small here so I can actually uh, deal with the scenario here. I'm going to grab maybe something like that. Yeah, that's going to work good. And I'm going to use this to help um, uh, blend in uh, these rocks a little bit more and add some flat areas. So on top of the rocks, I'm going to create a new uh, painting layer. And we'll just call this um, Dirt Blend. And uh, we'll move it down right on top of our rocks here. And I'm actually going to drop down my opacity of it and my size. And then I can start to, uh, we want to make sure that we have our stamp tool selected and all of these areas and through here, uh, I'm just going to start to, we're going to drop down my opacity a little bit more, maybe to something like, um, like 80. Now this is going to uh, kind of uh, smooth out some of the texture that we have a little bit too much. So we'll probably add in some more texture on top of it. But this is going to give us a nice little color consistency and allow us to control the shapes of the elements that we want here. Right? Like if we want this to feel like that these are the edges of the mountainous terrain where you have like these rock outcroppings that kind of stick out. Especially if we were trying to uh, create this map for actual play session, right? Where we have these layers where we want to make sure that you can see that uh, this is where you would want to stand. And then you have these other areas up through here. And then when, once we add in uh, some other foliage and uh, rock elements on top, uh, everything's going to really start to come together. And you can see we could have done this exactly on the same thing over here as well. We could have uh, done these same kind of rocks on this side. Uh, and the reason why I didn't do it this way is because I wanted to have a clear visual representation of the difference between the areas. Uh, where I want the rocks to be, I want it to really feel like rocks. And then I don't want it to be confusing uh, to have like rocks over on here as well. Uh, but we, will, we could add in some, some small little rock elements along the edge. Uh, one of the uh, really uh, paramount kind of um, things that we want to do when we do our map creations is we want to have easily identifiable uh, like pattern recognition for what elements are. And I think what I can do is come back over in here now and maybe even readjust these colors a little bit more. Pull out some of the blue here a little bit and maybe even drop down the opacity a little bit. Yeah, that's looking pretty good there. And as I said, we're going to add in some additional elements right on top of that as well. So before I add in my texture, I'm going to go back into my shadow layer here and I'm going to grab my little shadow brush from over on this side and make sure I have my stamps tool selected. And I'm actually going to make it rather oblong shaped, right? Like something like this. 
And I'm going to go along the edges here and start to add in some shadows. Let's make it a little bit more. Now remember, we've already adjusted this. So if I click, you can see we're just going to get a nice subtle shadow there. Uh, but that's still a little bit too dark. So I'm going to use my eraser and I'm going to drop down my opacity uh, to maybe something like 150. And you can see that's a much nicer kind of uh, area in there, right? And I'm just going to drop in some shadows right along here. I might even drop this down a little bit more. Let's go down to 80. And this is a little bit too shadow uh, down and through here, so I'm just going to come in and readjust this. I'm going to erase out some of those shadows. As you can see, this is really starting to feel like that there is uh, actual elevation elements. And we can actually, uh, let's say, for example, if we want this to be a little bit of an incline here, uh, we can uh, just use our shadow elements to kind of uh, uh, to indicate that, right? Let's just move that back a little bit. And I can drop down my opacity all the way down to something like 25. And then I can really start to uh, control all of the different elements here. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a, a lot of shadows right along the very base here. And what this is going to do is really make it feel like that these uh, elements have weight to them, as you can see. And then we'll do a little bit like poking out from the side. And if we want to, we can actually come in and do some more along this edge as well. We could uh, increase the size of this and darken that up. So we have a really great base here from which we can start to build up some other elements. And I'm going to add in some incidental kind of rocks around. And we should actually add in, this is a little bit floaty looking down here, so we want to add in some more shadow along these edges. And I'm just moving and clicking the left mouse button to build up some layers of opacity. Changing the uh, size and shape of the shadow as I, as I move around here to whatever is going to work best. Excellent. And now uh, one of the things that we can actually do because of this, right, I can actually just grab uh, something along these lines. I think that this is, which, what is, I should have named this. This is, oh, that's the, uh, yeah, this is like the adjustment layer here. Uh, so I can create my own textures. Uh, with these kinds of uh, elements, right? Let's use something like this. And I can uh, kind of place these around different sizes and shapes. And don't forget, we can change these as well so that we can um, get lots of different varieties in this, right? So for example, uh, let's say I do something along these lines and I'm going to be using this as a texture. Uh, I can now come in here and uh, change its color. We want to make it darker, though, or lighter. But let's say we make it all the way down to black, and then we can just kind of fade it out. Uh, so you can see you can very easily create all of your own textures that you want to. Uh, basically, the sky is the limit. And so now I don't have to do any other further adjustments in here. I can just begin to do this. And now when I adjust this, 
I can do my own uh, iterations of opacity and colors, and it's going to get also reevaluated on the layer level. So the system becomes exceptionally complex with what we can do. Very cool. I think I'm going to drop down the uh, overall opacity uh, on the layer here a bit more. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to take it all the way down to black. I want a little bit of uh, color variation in there, I think. Yeah, maybe something like this. I think that works pretty good. And now as I begin to uh, continue to work in here, those colors are going to be maintained. So you can see that I didn't even have an original kind of texture. I just created it uh, very easily. And let's do a little bit down through here. So I hope everyone's having a great week. Lots of uh, games being played. And I can even add in some texture over the top of uh, some of these rocks and stuff as well. And we might even want to add in some additional elements, maybe some wooden walkways and, and uh, steps or ladders on the side. Where it is a fortification, you'd want to have a, a good kind of vantage point to attack your enemies. But look at how well the, those rocks just kind of blend into uh, the surrounding. And I think I am going to actually uh, grab this shadow, go back down into the shadow area here. I drop this down to something like uh, 50. And I just want to uh, re-emphasize some of these little areas in through here. Just not quite happy with that edge. As you can see, that's going to be much better. Yeah, that's excellent. So if I ever do anything, and uh, I oftentimes use a lot of shortcut keys and along those lines. So if I ever do anything and uh, you guys are unaware of what I did, please uh, throw it into the chat. Uh, I will uh, always, or if you have any questions or if you think of uh, anything that um, I did that uh, you might want a further explanation on, uh, please. I am more than happy to do it. So the next thing that we're actually going to do is um, uh, I want to actually show you guys how you can uh, create all of your own uh, little puddles and stuff on anything that you want to do without having to add any image elements to it whatsoever. And we can do all of this. We might even be able to do the water with it this way as well. But we're going to create a new effects layer. And again, we're going to come in here. We're going to use a, um, a adjust colors layer. And again, we can push it all the way up to the blue. Uh, but we're going to drop down our, our, um, our brightness here. And we're going to add in a mask. Boom, just like that. And now if we hold down Alt, uh, we can make these nice little shapes. right? And we're going to readjust this later. This is just, uh, we can come in here. And we can blur out these edges so it's not quite so um, intrusive. And this is much too bright, right? So we're going to bring this down. And we're going to find, uh, by mixing and matching these colors, we can actually create uh, some really cool kind of interactions here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change these colors here a little bit, something maybe along these lines. Now, this by itself is not going to be super convincing, right? Like, let's... This is not going to uh, really uh, make it feel like anything. But here is the real true advantage of the system. 
is that we can do all of these adjustments. We might even want to make it brighter on the lighter side, depending on how much uh, water reflection we want to do, but probably somewhere around in here, right? Uh, we can duplicate this layer, and it's going to do another one. It's going to maintain the same exact mass, so we don't have to do it twice. Uh, and then we can just change this to something like water. And uh, we're going to have to change uh, some of the speed and intensity of this, you know, the rippling effect. But uh, because we want to have it to be a much smaller kind of body of water here. But just a little bit of variation. Maybe what we want to do is increase the, uh, yeah, something along these lines. We get these nice little variations in here. And we can even uh, duplicate that again, for example. And we might even add uh, clouds to it. And we're going to slow this way down to something like uh, 51. Maybe a little bit more than that, maybe like 53. And we can adjust the amount of that this is going to interfa interact with it. And we can drop this down underneath too so it gets affected uh, by uh, the other elements. And so if you uh, aren't aware of this, these all uh, stack as well, uh, just like any other layer would. And so therefore we can change the order in which that these are presented. So if we want the clouds to be uh, not affected uh, by the color adjustment uh, or by the uh, water adjustment, then we can put it on top like this. We can also adjust all of these different parameters until we get something that is uh, pretty And what the cloud element is going to actually do for us is it's going to give us uh, what we can see here, some actual like movement in certain directions. And then we can always come back into uh, here and we can adjust all of these parameters until we find something that we think is going to work really well for us. So there's just tons and tons of things. And then we can actually add in uh, some additional elements uh, around if we wanted to paint some elements in. Uh, but this is a really quick and easy way that you can um, do a lot of other stuff. So even with these here, let's, let's create a new painting layer. And I'll grab something like this. And I'll drop down the opacity here to maybe something like 50. And I would be able to uh, even uh, paint in. This might even need to be down a little bit further, like 25. We could do a little bit of frothiness around the edges. Maybe even create some swirls. Oh, uh, the question is, is there an effect that can make something look uh, shiny? And then I would, again, I could come over and uh, back into here, and then I could further readjust the opacity of these things. And you can see you can actually make some pretty convincing little puzzles. And you could do this technique on any map, right? So if you had something uh, that was like a pre-designed map in a module or something, you could add in a lot of different elements to it. So the question is, is there an effect that could make uh, something look shiny? And so the answer is yes and no. You can use a combination of effects to kind of uh, do specular highlights. So again, we can uh, do, uh, let's say, an effect layer. I'm just going to uh, delete the puddle areas here. Now, I was just doing that for demonstration purposes. But let's create a new effects layer. And let's make some shiny elements onto our, uh, either like a stone or, or maybe on our wall itself. So again, uh, I use the um, adjust colors uh, layer a lot. 
And let's turn this up a lot. And we're going to add in our mask. And let's blur that out a lot. And so again, we could make these nice little shiny spots. And then we can adjust this accordingly as, as shiny as we want. And then I could use another adjustment layer on the other side. So if I was trying to make this, um, and that probably should be a little bit brighter there. And we could even add in some additional kind of color elements. So we wanted it to be like a little bit on the uh, red or orange side, as you can see. So you can do some nice shiny little spots and things. Uh, and you could actually use several different adjustment layers uh, and and create something that looked very shiny for, for for sure. You could even do like reflective highlights and and all of that stuff. So yes, absolutely, you can use uh, effect layers to. You can use effect layers to do just about anything. And if we even wanted to, right? If we wanted to make this seem a little bit glistening, we can duplicate this and change this to maybe like a, an ocean. And then again, we can uh, change some of these values and then we can make it feel like it's doing all kinds of different stuff. Lots of fun things that you can do. So uh, definitely experiment and have a great time uh, doing all of this different stuff. Yeah, you bet. Uh, yeah, one of the really cool things that you can do with stuff like this uh, is like handouts of like magic items and things. You can really make them look magical. So I use effect layers all all over the place uh, in handouts in in everything that you can think of. They're great. So now what I'm actually going to do is let's add in uh, some tree elements. Uh, we want our tokens. Well, maybe we'll do. Yeah, let's let's just use like some of the regular trees here. And I'm just going to grab some of these larger kind of groupings of trees. Or maybe we'll just do a couple of individual ones. Probably uh, primarily um, as our textures. And again, I'm going to make this darker. So let's. Uh, I'm actually going to see. Let's let's uh, let's let's grab maybe something like that's way too dark. Yeah, let's zoom in here and I'll grab a nice color. Maybe we'll increase this a bit. Yeah, maybe something like this. Add a bit more red to it. Yeah, I like that. And we'll add in a new layer here. We'll call this one trees. Oftentimes, the reason why I will add my trees in uh, in a stage like this is because I don't want to do a lot of uh, information that's going to be hidden by the trees. And once we add in our little shadow information and whatnot from our trees, make sure we have our stamp tool selected. Uh, then we can uh, really kind of feel where we want to put like rocks and things and do a lot of stuff along those lines. And we can also change 
our parameters here so that we get a lot of variety. And we can even change our colors. Yeah, we could do something like this. Let's let's do uh, a couple of other types of trees as well. Maybe one. Let's do one over here. As you move up into higher elevations, depending on where this wants to be in the mountains, uh, obviously you're going to have mostly uh, evergreens. Oh, I like that. That's pretty cool. Excellent. And so we have uh, all of these different elements. And so uh, I will just, I, there's a neat little trick that you can do that is super easy to do, like drop shadows. Uh, I try to demonstrate this a lot. Um, I'm not going to actually use it in my end product here, uh, but I am going to demonstrate. So you just duplicate this. And then in the Layers tab, uh, you can drop all of the colors down uh, to black or maybe just with a little bit of blue in it, uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve for your shadow colors. And then maybe drop down uh, the opacity to something like this. I'll drop this underneath. And then I can hold down control and just kind of pull these out. It's a very simple and easy way that you can uh, produce shadows for just about anything that you want to have uh, for like a little drop shadow like this. And we can actually leave that in. That's that's fine. I'll uh, but I, I tend to like to paint in my shadows. I like them to be a little bit softer and less um, so precise. But what we'll do is we'll create a new uh, shadow layer here. And I'm probably just going to do this one last uh, layer here, and then I will call it for the day. Even though there is quite a bit more that I would like to do to this map. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit oblong. Uh, maybe something like this. Maybe a, yeah, a bit more. Something like this. And I'm actually going to just stamp off uh, each one of these trees. And then I will go in and adjust my uh, opacity after the fact. So we can do something like this. And then we can come in here and now we can just adjust that opacity to wherever we feel like it should be. We might even want to move it over a little bit. Now those trees, I think, are a little bit too uh, saturated as well. Uh, so I think I'll go in and uh, bring down their um, saturation levels. Yeah, maybe something just like that. Uh, those are a little bit too dark, I guess. A little bit too dark. Uh, so one of the other things that we could do, uh, maybe we'll just do one more thing. One more thing is we can create a uh, new effects layer. And we can do this one instead of 
uh, our color adjustment. We're going to do a color adjustment, but we're going to do this for highlights. And so we could do this uh, as a highlight layer, uh, which is, means we're going to actually uh, increase like the uh, yellow kind of content here. And we might even want to uh, change, mess with the brightness as well, but we'll enable a mask. And then we can, uh, we want to up our blur all the way. And we can add in uh, some of these like highlights. Uh, where this is much too too uh, intrusive, right? We want to bring this down to maybe something like 51. We want it to be quite subtle. As you can see, something like this. And we can just start to paint these uh, in areas where we want uh, a little bit more um, contrast here. Bring that down to 51. And we can even use this on the ground itself in areas that we want to increase our... Um, and the uh, blur radius is going to be getting increased as well, so this will be a lot more um, viable. Uh, we used to do this quite often. But this is great for uh, creating these nice uh, highlights along the wall on a particular edge. And now that we have uh, our basic uh, tree orientation done, now we can go in and do all of the little stuff uh, in lower levels. We can add in as much detail as we possibly want. All right, guys, uh, I am going to call it there for the day. Um, do you guys have any questions or is there anything else that I can explain or uh, demonstrate for you guys? Uh, if you if you have any sort of questions whatsoever, just throw it into the chat and I'm more than happy to uh, do my best to kind of uh, bring you guys up to speed as much as I can, that is to say. Thanks, Tabletop Hobby. Yeah, you bet. Play games, Patty. Uh, and uh, I am going to be, I know that some of you guys have sent me some emails. Uh, I will be putting together a small group of people uh, to be testing out some things. Um, so I will be responding to you guys, but it probably won't be for another week or so, which I do appreciate uh, the uh, emails. Awesome. Well, great. It doesn't look like anybody has any questions. Ah, uh, yes. The after will be back on Thursday. Oh, thanks, uh, uh, Dark Darth. It, you know what it is? It's just time. If you have, if you have spent the number of hours that I have inside of Fantasy Grounds making maps, um, you. you you would really get a good feel of uh, the entire workspace. I, I seriously probably have uh, at least uh, at least 40 hours a week in here for the last uh, year. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you have all have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week. Uh, again, I will be back on this next Saturday at 3 p.m. Uh, I believe it's the day before the 4th of July, so it'll be the 3rd of July. Uh, and uh, if there is, as always, I'm going to put my um, email address into the chat. If you guys have any questions, uh, if you guys run into any problems or... Let's see if I can remember how to spell my name. Uh, if 
there is a product that you're thinking about purchasing um, and you would just like to see its contents, make sure that, you know, uh, send me a, an email. I am more than happy to load it up and uh, show you everything in there. If you have something that you want to see me cover on the stream, uh, please uh, reach out. I'm more than happy to, um, to accommodate as much as I can. Yeah, I I, uh, I I think I'm I'll be fine. I just think I ate something that just isn't quite agreeing with me. So I have uh, a little bit of a, a, a intestinal discomfort. Great guys. Well, thank you so much, and we will see you all next time.